Emergency services were called to Whitney Houston's hotel room in Beverly Hills yesterday afternoon where the star was pronounced dead soon afterwards, the cause of which is, is unknown. The American singer and actress was due to appear at the Grammy Awards this evening where it was rumoured she would perform, but sadly not to be the case. With a combination of powerful vocals and bags of sex appeal, the most awarded female artist of all time influenced a generation of artists, from Mariah Carey to Christina Aguilera and even a Nottingham gospel singer. I caught up with Julia Weaver from the Chariots of Joy Gospel Choir in the Meadows and began by asking how she heard the sad news. Well, actually, it was my, my father who, um, who um, told me, and I was quite shocked, actually, um, and, and really sad at such a, uh, an age, 48, still young, um, extremely talented woman with a phenomenal voice. It just made me feel very sad. Did you ever meet her? I haven't actually met Whitney Houston uh, directly, but I have met her mother, Cece Houston, Cissy Houston, who's um, a renowned and prominent gospel singer in, in America, um, and has seen her sing with a choir in America. I've been over uh, many times to the gospel music workshops um, several times over the years, and, and have seen you know, people like Dionne Warwick sing, for example, who was her, co- her cousin, I believe, and Aretha Franklin, her, her godmother. So um, not actually met her directly, but have, have been sort of not too far <laughs> from her in terms of her, her talent and her voice. How was her mother to meet? Um, very engaging. Um, she sang with uh, a choir at the time, and you could really see the resemblance in, in vitality as well as, as voice. And you could see where Whitney Houston would have really... Uh, gathered this this gift from, um, and so yes, you could see that this, this strong, powered woman um, would give birth to a, a, another woman who would then grow up to be very well known throughout the world for her voice. As a gospel singer yourself, how important was Whitney Houston to the industry of gospel music? Right, she was uh, as a gospel singer. Um, listening to Whitney, I can hear the th- that sort of gospel sound coming through her voice, and she's long been affiliated with gospel music. And in fact, she cut her teeth singing church standards with her local New Jersey congregation choir, um, and collaborated with BB and CC Winans uh, on their hit record, Heaven, and many uh, people in the gospel world, as well as the uh, non-gospel or secular music world, have known her voice to sing in songs like Count On Me, for example, in Waiting To Exhale, um, and also The Preacher's Wife, where uh, a soundtrack became, I think, the, I think it was seen as the best-selling gospel album in history. And so... The, the sound of gospel reverberates through Whitney's voice, and even when she sang a non-gospel uh, song, you could hear that passion, that gospel passion in her voice. During the 80s and, and the late 90s, uh, her peak in, in making music, she was one of the world's best-selling artists and went on to have quite a well-publicised battle with drugs. Do you think, despite the troubles, she was still a good role model? I think she had a real battle, as we all know, and, and certainly... Uh, when you listen to interviews with her mother and other people who knew her very well, she still had something left in her that, where her, her, her role model status was not deeply affected. And I just want to sort of just to, um, to mention a, a recent uh, interview she was in on the Oprah Winfrey show. Um, and she was asked about uh, her spiritual take and how how her troubled life had been affected and whether her spiritual life could come back to be the way it was. And she really ambiguously um, answered by saying, yes, it can be somebody bigger than you and I. And it was believed that the reference to that somebody bigger than you and I, which was also a song she sang, was in reference to her her faith in God. Um, And so there were many um, life performances of late with lots of God references. And so... Yes, she did live a, live a troubled life, but I think she began to come back to who she was and, you know, that early childhood raised as a Baptist and, and then later exposed to the Pentecostal church. I think she began to look at that and began to come back to where she began. And so um, it would be a shame really to say that her life um, took a complete turn towards that troubled life that she led and, and that, that there was no... Um, recompense for that because I believe there was I think there was a lot of strength in her and she leaned on her faith 
in order to get back to where she was, where she began. Talking of that journey, there were complaints at times that she had left the black world behind and black music, gospel music behind. How did you feel about those complaints, bearing in mind that, that she was one of the few gospel artists to really crack the pop industry? I think with almost every artist, uh, um, black artist that we hear of, there, there, there always seems to be in the in their history some kind of complaint about um, people losing their way in terms of their uh, African heritage. I believe that uh, Whitney was perhaps influenced by the business um, itself rather than, so whether she was singing pop or, or, or R&B or gospel, um, I would argue that you could still hear the gospel or the R&B even in her pop music um, singing. Um, I believe during that time as well, when she was being criticised, she was very much politically aware and p- politically involved. In fact, she was she refused to sing anywhere um, during the apartheid years, where businesses were in support of um, or supporting, uh, you know, the apartheid regime. She she was very very experienced in in using her in using her um, her famous stance in actually saying, no, these wrongs, I will support, um, I will go against. And so I think it was really unfair to just, you know, look at uh, the music part of her life and not think about what she was doing politically. She was very, very influential. What lasting legacy do you think she'll leave behind? Outside of her obvious phenomenal voice and the talent she had, I think it will also be a message to uh, people who want to go into the music industry to really stay away from things like drugs and alcohol, which influenced you know her in a negative way, and to look at um, you know the strength in the gift, the talent, the God-given talent that, that that you know that they have, and to use it for in a positive way. But I think she'll never be forgotten. I mean, this is a woman who um, she bro- broke many many records in terms of how many albums she sold and and so on. Um, and, I, and she came back, and I think we um, have to remember that she came back. She was lost for a while, so to speak, but she did, you know, she, she did come back. And in fact, apparently, I um, uh, heard somewhere recently uh, today that the, the night before she died, she'd sang, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And I think that is very fitting, that despite all that she'd gone through and, and, and uh, you know, and the terrible um, experiences she had, she was able to say, to sing on the night before she died, Jesus, yes, Jesus loves me, and she was indeed going to open the, um, the Grammy Awards ceremony uh, this evening as well, I believe. Mm. And so, you know, um, I think the legacy she left has been one which her daughter, uh, Bobby Christina, um, will also hopefully carry through, and, and that she will always be remembered as, as an icon, a woman who seemingly made her peace, um, and I think that's how she should be remembered, that she used her gift. And she used it very much in gospel music, which is close to my heart as well. And so that m- means a lot to me that she blessed many people with her uplift- uplifting voice in so many ways and, and that she continued to, 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 to spread that throughout the world.